Episode one, Lovecraft Country. You all know I've been waiting for this for a while since I did that review trailer back around February. And the first episode did not disappoint. Very good, very well done. And this is just going to be a very quick synopsis to break it down, some of the finer points, get to know who the characters are. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Me, Larry, and Sharonda from Pairweight will be going live Monday night, 9 p.m. to do a more glorified review of episode one. It was a doozy. And let's go ahead and dive on into it. Your main character, Atticus Freeman, comes back from the military. He's riding on a bus with a black lady. Bus breaks down, and immediately they go ahead and show you the gravity of what Atticus is going to be dealing with when it comes to racism or monsters. Because the bus breaks down, and ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind this is set in the 60s. And they are doing an extremely good job of giving you a real-life depiction of what 60s life was for African Americans. The bus breaks down, the white people come to pick up the white people in a truck, and I'm thinking, oh, they're going to let the black people get up there. Wrong. Black people had to walk however many miles it was. And Atticus finally gets to town. He hooks up with his uncle, George Freeman, who is being played by Courtney B. Vance. And they just kind of talk about his father. You didn't get to see his father this episode, but his father is Montrose Freeman, played by Michael Williams. Y'all know him from The Wire. And they also introduce us to Lydia Lewis, who's played by Journey Smollett. And when Jeremy Smollett came to town, we learned a lot about her character being that her character is like the party girl for that generation. The family's upset with her. She meets up with her sister who's on stage singing. And she asked the sister after they did their little singing, can she stay with her? And the sister's like, your ass is staying with me only for two days. And we learned that the sister has beef with her because she didn't show up for the mother's funeral. And she wasn't trying to start anything but obviously it lets you know the dynamic between those two is not as good as it should be. And we later find out from the brother that Lydia is just a party girl. And for her to be broke, her ass didn't want to take no kind of job. She had specific jobs she wanted to do. But she winds up seeing Atticus and she's like, oh man, he's good looking without them glasses. And Atticus is about to be on a mission to get up to Massachusetts. Artem. And Courtney B. Vance wants to go. He's trying to do a little mission trip anyway. And lo and behold, Lydia decides she's going to go to get to the brother's house. So they embark upon a cross-country journey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, think about the gravity of black people trying to navigate a cross-country journey back in those days. Before they left, they was in a wrestle, they was doing some research about a particular sheriff in one of the counties they had to go through. And I'll get back to him in a second. And so they make sure they had, you know, spare tires, stuff to use the bathroom outside. And thank goodness Atticus made sure they had a gun. Because I can only imagine the real fear of racism black people, especially in the South, had to deal with when you wanted to take a trip. Because if your car break down in this nighttime, man, you is as good as effed back in those days. But they begin the trip. And they end up eventually in a city where they thought they were going to take their butt in there, have a little coffee, get a little pancake, a little flapjacks and some syrup, and hell to the no. The cook goes to the back room, makes a phone call. Thank goodness Lydia had to go use the bathroom and could eavesdrop because no sooner than she comes running from out the bathroom telling them to get in the car, the police is chasing them, shooting at them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is something that happens. Now, I'm 40 years old, and I'm from a country town called Aiden, North Carolina. And when I was seven years old, my grandma lived out in the country, and the KKK stormed upon her yard doing donuts. She threw me in a trunk in the closet, locked it, pulled out her old shotgun named Susie, and turned out all the lights, 
stuck the gun out the window and was ready to do it. And this is what these people are going through, running through the streets with Lydia driving the car and she was driving good as hell. And throughout that chase, they're trying to find this young lady, Christina Bellwife, who apparently has magic. She's got the Lovecraft going on. And they, as they're being chased by the police, shooting at them, another perfectly fine, almost look like a Rolls Royce Bentley, rolls up on the other side of them, gets in between them and the sheriff, and some kind of magic power created the truck to flip over and crush the, the white people shooting at the black people getting away. And the girl steps out the car and looks at them, not as if she was upset with them, but kind of like, where are y'all going? I'm not here to hurt you. And so then they move on. They finally get to the brother's house. The brother falls out with Lydia because of what happened with the mother. Didn't go to the mother's funeral. So now Lydia is stuck on this cross-country journey with Atticus and with Uncle Freeman. Now they get into this county where you've got old redneck Barney Fife Sheriff who's like, you've got to be out of this city and out of this county by sundown. Well, they make it through sundown, and I looked at my wife, and I was like, I don't know why they're cheering. I, I don't know why they're cheering like they really made it. What's to stop him from just coming across the county line and chasing them down? Well, lo and behold, he did that, but he made a call to his other folks in the other county before that happened. And so this whole episode was just showing you and setting background tone for the narratives of each character and them having to deal with the racism that's going on in that era. But at this point, ladies and gentlemen, when they're apprehended by the cops and taken through the woods, now is where you sprinkle in the danger of monsters and magic. And so the cops got them on the ground trying to pin a robbery on them that they didn't have anything to do with. And then monsters start eating the hell up out of the white people. And somehow, someway, Atticus and Lydia are able to make it to an abandoned little house. They get in there. Uncle Freeman is still out there while the cops is getting their asses eaten up. So two cops come banging on the door and, and they're like, we're not letting y'all up in this joint. No, why? for what? Why are we going to let you in here? So they start shooting through the door. One of the cops' arm is almost completely bitten off. Okay, so they get in. You got one cop who's okay and the other cop arm almost going. They're in there barking out orders to these African-Americans as if they running the show, okay? Finally, the uncle pulls out a flashlight and is able to make it to the barn and realizes that they're dealing with some monsters, Dracula-style monsters, with some kind of, and light is their enemy. And he's able to tell that to these cops. And so they was like, okay, well, whatever. And Journey's like, you know, can we get more light? So Atticus comes up with the fine idea, we need to get to the car, get the car, bring it down here and get some lights in here. Well, the sheriff in there whose arm is completely ripped off, looked like he's been through a shredder, is like, nah, I'm not going to let you go, black boy. You're going to send the girl. And at first, Atticus is like, nah. But then Lydia's like, you know, I used to run track. And the first thing my wife said is, what kind of shoes is she wearing? <laughs> <laughs> because when she got out that room, man, she was flying like Usain Bolt. You couldn't stop the train. She was gone. She makes it to the car. A monster tries to get her. She turns on the lights and hits the monster, and she gets back. And this very scene you've seen in the trailers where the car was coming through the house, well, that was her. She made it back with the car. She came through the house. And lo and behold, these monsters are the type that once they bite you and infect you, if they don't completely eat you off, you turn into one of them. Uncle Freeman figured that out. Uncle Freeman is extremely smart. He's like a wizard on this thing, so keep an eye out on him. And they finally get all that figured out, and they ride it out to the morning time because a bunch of monsters surrounded the whole entire house. They had flares, and then some mysterious noise came up as if it was the grand pooba of all the monsters calling them home. They left. It's daytime, and we see our three characters walking down the street. And then they eventually make it to Christina Braithwaite's house. They're invited in, and I guess we'll pick up from there next week at what's going on, because I'm assuming all the magic and introduction of magic and witchcraft slash lovecraft is going to happen next week. But so far, Jordan Peele, man, anything you touch turns to gold. 
I really enjoyed this episode. It was heart pounding from the beginning. The only thing was me and my wife realized at the very beginning of the episode, homeboy or someone had to be dreaming because my man was looking at pink black ghosts or pink black Barbie dolls coming down out of alien ships. We knew that it wasn't going to be that weird, not out the gate. But having said that, I would rate this a very good foundational episode. You're going to get five stars from me out of five on this one. You set the tone and I can't wait to see what happens in the next episode. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, get yourself a life game. Be sure to follow me and Larry and Sharonda from Pay or Wait tomorrow, Monday at 9 p.m. We will go live. We'll take questions. We'll review the show. And if you have anything you want to discuss with me before that, hit me on Instagram. Handles in the video description at Life Gains. And until that next sex is hell video.